we're going to now move to our next panel um, that will address the difficult challenge of creating a sustainable digital world for a sustainable economy. And for that, I'm very happy to welcome uh, the panelists. So we'll start with uh, Jelena Zalinovski, the CISO for Europe Investment Bank. She will be joining online. Um, so I think we're going to have her online. Then Jose Paramoyano, Professor of Digital Strategy at uh, IMD. Pascal Station, Chairman of European Cybersecurity Competence Center. Welcome. Delphine Gay, Senior Director, Manage Detection and Respond EMEA for Kudelski Security. Emric Griborio, Global Head of Information Security Assurance Services for LGS. And your discussion lead, who's going to be Jean Marc Rickley, Head of a Global and Emerging Risk as a GCSP. Please welcome, take a seat. Welcome. Hello. Yeah. You have your picture behind. Yeah. Sustainable digital world for a sustainable economy. And this panel, the, the assumption behind this panel is that the digital world has become, if you want, a bedrock for uh, a sustainable economy, maybe a sufficient and necessary condition for academics in the room. If you look at information and communication technologies, in Switzerland, uh, that represents about 5% of global GDP of the Swiss uh, GDP. But uh, the other issue is that, can you imagine uh, having any line of business no longer relying on digital, economy, uh, on digital uh, infrastructure? That's almost uh, pretty much impossible. Earlier this year, I was uh, speaking at a conference on, at NATO on resilience, and the head of Nokia, the CEO of Nokia, was also speaking, and he said something that I think was really uh, thoughtful. He said, well, there is no resilience without resilience in the digital network, and there is no resilient uh, digital network without trust. And I think that it's a key aspect of the digital uh, economy that also falls into uh, what the Trust Valley is all about, is fostering uh, digital trust. So, in this, uh, during this panel, we'll, we'll talk about um, two things. What are the challenges uh, to get to uh, a sustainable digital world? Um, in the line of business of different speakers uh, here in the panel, they represent government, they represent the private sector, so it's a really good mix. And as well, what are the possible uh, solutions uh, for this? And uh, we'll start uh, with uh, Jelena Z um, uh, Zelenovic, uh, because she's online, and I will ask her the question uh, in a row. So, f for you, Yelena, what are the, the challenges that you see um, in your uh, function, but also more general in a practitioner as CISO um, at the European Investment Bank? Elena. Elena. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Switzerland, and heartfelt thanks to the Trust Valley for the invitation. Um, so the challenges, indeed, we, we, we face various challenges with CISOs, but obviously cybersecurity is the core of our challenge and our uh, um, and now the buzzword also that you're talking about uh, generative AI as well. But some of the ways that we, we, we can find a plus of these challenges and think about it as a predicament in cybersecurity, a dilemma or something that doesn't have a solution, but improvements, constant improvements in the ways we work on it, is strengthening the cybersecurity, meaning implementing advanced security protocols, utilizing AI a lot more for threat detection, automation itself, and uh, regularly updating the systems. Then I think all of us will agree when we say user education. And facing the education is there's never enough of it. Thinking about diversity, actually, to educate the end users, because all it takes is one. So, basic cybersecurity hygiene, that was on the side. Um, collaboration with regulatory bodies, I was very glad to hear just before this on the, on the panel that there has been a talk about regulations, regulatory advancements that are happening. We all know that DOR is uh, RMA, and they'll be there for 2025 that we need to comply with that point uh, for all the uh, organizations that we do. 
So that's one of those challenges, but also, I would say, benefits for, uh, for all of us that uh, DORE is bringing uh, for the cyber resilience of our organizations. And then somebody also, I heard that I was very glad on the previous uh, panel that uh, there has been a talk about the transparency, about information sharing. I think it's one of the utmost and important and valuable assets that we in uh, our field can have. Obviously, there's a huge challenge still on exchanging the information be it between the public, private, uh, academia sector, uh, civil society. But this is a challenge that needs to be really tackled uh, a lot more. And when we share, rest assured, we also are building the trust through that transparency with each other. Um, and I would say that is probably one of the biggest challenges in cybersecurity, uh, building that trust uh, and sharing the information on not just national but international levels. So this is something that we should work on a lot more. Um, CISOs, as uh, organizations that uh, we work with, uh, et cetera. Good. And are there any um, specific challenges that are related to uh, the financial, the finance uh, industry that you can identify that would be different from, from others? I would say the challenges for CISOs in any organization uh, are pretty much the same. Maybe it varies by the regulations and challenges you have to comply with. It varies with the systems you own and also the controls you have to comply with. You learn kind of different ways and different regulations depending on the industry you're in. But at the end, ultimately, it is up to CISOs also to, to protect that uh, ecosystem, uh, the cybersecurity ecosystem of the organization we work with. So yeah, the regulations themselves, controls perhaps on those regulations might be different, but at the end of the day, I, I think it's something that we are all trying to do on different industries, and it's very transversal uh, skills. And in terms of information sharing, um, what are the solutions that you found to, to, to improve that, that state? Is it, is it a technical solution? Is it more a human solution? Is it I actually really like the question again, touching this information sharing. Um, they're both technical and human. And I think uh, you cannot have one without the other. Uh, people will not share with you if you don't build the human level and human trust with, uh, with the people and practitioners around you. So one of the ways I would say is that CISOs ourselves, we need to be more out there. We need to create the connections with other CISOs, with people who practitioner and not just connection to the trust themselves. Now, on the much higher level, we have governments, probably more advanced governments that will not share with less of advanced governments because they don't see benefits maybe in sharing such, such information because they don't get anything back or they don't get enough back. And that's a pity sometimes because I also believe that in that sense, we, we could improve and fight the benefits because even the small countries can benefit the bigger countries with some of the IOCs or information that they get. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that uh, you, you, you might uh, switch off the conversation because you, you're online, so I will now pass the floor to uh, the other panelists So, about what the current challenge is for uh, sustainable digital world. And uh, Elena was talking about education, and we have here a representative from uh, Education uh, Institute from IMD. So, uh, Jose, uh, what, are, what is your take on the, the, the challenges? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. We definitely observe one main challenge with the, or at the organizations with which we work, which is the balance between short-term and long-term objectives. And I am glad that we heard that concept already this morning from our colleague here from the Swiss uh, Medical Network, this challenging challenge between aligning short-term and long-term. And I promise you that this was going to be my answer before I listen to that, uh, to that panel, uh, which makes me look less innovative, less fresh, but somehow underpins that what we're discussing here is actually a problem. Companies are sometimes tempted to, let's say, use data or use algorithms or AI in a way that is going to help them right now, in the next quarter, in the next year, but that eventually will cut the options on the long term short. And balancing that tension that's one of the key challenges that we have identified so far. 
Do you think it's only uh, in the business sector? Do you think government, uh, especially in democracies, you know, uh, government have to be elected, so they have to address the immediate needs of their uh, constituents instead of thinking yeah. long term? I would, I would leave governments aside. I'm right. going to trust governments. Allow me that leap of faith tonight, uh, this morning. I'm going to speak about political organizations, for sure, yeah. definitely. Organizations of any kind and political organizations naturally do have an agenda are facing that very same tension. Right, thanks. Pascal, what about you? What's your take on uh, the challenges? Uh, yes, I think the, well, um, complementing what, what has been said, um, one important challenge that um, uh, we try to address at the European level at the moment with this uh, uh, new cybersecurity competence center in, in, in Bucharest is the, I would say, the organizational or the economic challenge. Uh, to, um, to make sure that the, there is uh, the visibility and the knowledge of, of all the competences, of all the, the solutions that are present, but are, that are a bit hidden, that are um, being created or that are, have, have been developed in startups, in small companies, uh, in, in different regions, uh, when, we, when we look at, at Europe, for instance but which are, which are not so uh, visible out of their, of, their own, of their own region. And so this, this challenge of, of making sure that we can benefit, that everybody can benefit from all this, these things that are, that are existing, uh, is one of the challenges that, that um, we, we try to address with, with this new uh, initiative, to making sure that the, also the, the investments, the, the, the funding in, in research, in innovation, in technological development that is, that is available from the government side, but also from, from, uh, from, from uh, uh, private entities, um, has this visibility, this knowledge about where are the, the, um, uh, the key competences, which one would be really interesting to bring together, um, and, 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 and then to really do the investments uh, in, in future-proof uh, aspects. So what you mentioned is, is really interesting, is that to try to look a bit more uh, in the, into the future than just one, two quarters or, or, or one, two years, to try to, to, to uh, address uh, or to, to do the investments in looking into, in, in, into these things. And, and also making sure that all this very... Uh, interesting and, and, and um, 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 I would say, ideas or, or, or research that is coming out of, 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 of universities flows into the economy so that, that we make sure that this transfer aspect is, is, is addressed more, more than, than it is now. It is being done in several regions, but it's, I would say, globally, when we, do, when we look at Europe, there is a huge challenge to, to make sure that um, uh, that we um, uh, well, address, address this together. All right, okay, good. And now, Delphine, from the an industry perspective, so, and your experience, so what are the challenges? What are my challenges? Okay, so how much time do I have? Well, about three minutes. <laughs> Just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, as a MSSP provider, I can tell you that we're also facing uh, tons of challenges uh, every day, so this is clearly not, uh, clearly not easy. <laughs> Well, if I have to uh, prioritize, I would go with, uh, okay, first, ransom, ransomware. We all know uh, what it is, for sure. Um, so, so clearly, I think this is not a question of if I'm going to be attacked. It's, it's a question of when it's going to happen. That's very clear. The, the, the attacks are being more and more sophisticated, so now they are targeting, actually, critical infrastructure, but also uh, transportation, healthcare. So this is, uh, this is really crucial today to have, you know, to update constantly the, the tools and techniques to face, uh, to face uh, this challenge. And also from that, I would say the time. This is a main challenge. The time is our enemy. So the time to respond, to respond because clearly, not a long time ago, maybe two years ago or a little bit more, uh, it took, you know, more than 100 days actually for uh, between the first evidences of an attack until this attack is deployed. And today, it's less than actually four days. So clearly, the time to respond is crucial, critical. So this is clearly a challenge. We need to be ready. We need to be ready to, to respond. 
Another challenge that I like to mention also, this is the talent shortage, because I'm, face, I'm facing that every day. Um, we need talents to sustain a secure world, um, a digital world, clearly. And uh, we talked about that this morning, and it was really interesting. It's really hard to find talents. It's really hard, really hard to uh, also retain those talents. So basically, there are studies showing that there is a shortage of 3.5 million of cybersecurity experts. So clearly, this is a very big challenge. Um, also, let's talk about cloud security, because I think this is, this is really also something uh, that is uh, more and more challenging, because more and more organizations are actually migrating to uh, cloud environments. So this is absolutely uh, necessary to have uh, you know, like a robust security around those cloud-based uh, assets. And maybe, uh, I have so many, I'm sorry, huh, but that's true, but supply chain. Let's talk about supply chain. Uh, I think supply chain, this is, this is a really interesting one, because basically, um, you know, the world is being so digitalized, clearly, that uh, now we have third parties everywhere. So we need to rely on third parties. We need to rely on vendors. We need to rely on uh, cloud providers. Uh, so that is becoming a real challenge to trust those third parties. Yeah, so the issue of trust, of trust is really central to Absolutely. Your, your business. Clearly. So if there are students in, a, in the audience or watching online, it's a glimmer of hope because uh, Kudelski might uh, be interested in your skills. Um, and uh, finally, Emmerich, uh, you're working for a company that is uh, truly transnational. So what, can, what are the challenges for you that you can identify? Okay, thank you, Jean-Marc. So maybe to start a, a small word about my company, SGS, for those of you who don't know, we're a certification body. So we basically do audits, assessments, gap analysis, certification in information security and cyber security. And I think, to be honest, uh, it was said many times this morning, in our view, the main challenge for the years to come is around small and medium enterprise and small and medium business. Um, I think you read the press and you see all these high profile cases of large organizations being attacked. Uh, but the reality is you don't hear about the small companies being attacked. And our view is that in the next uh, decade, this is where most of the attack will be happening. And I think this uh, network of small companies is very exposed. Uh, so we're talking about resilience, about digital resilience. The small and medium enterprise is basically the foundation of our economy. Um, Delphine, you were talking about supply chain. So they are all participating in many supply chains. Uh, being asked to be more digital uh, in the way that they deal with uh, the, the people with who they, they work. And, and without you know, um, this, this resilience, we will go into a lot of trouble. So, so I think for us, this is where we see the main issue um, and uh, trying to see what can be done to, uh, to address the issue in terms of creating this awareness. Uh, Yelena, you were talking about education. I think it's fundamental and also trying to reach a certain level of maturity in those companies uh, to try to offer some assessments um, and other types of services. So I think that's what I would say. Right, so you, you highlighted here uh, a couple of, um, of challenges that are for some very operational when it comes to the type of devolution of attack to uh, supply chain and also much more conceptually in terms of the perspective between long term and, and, and short term. So now if you could go maybe uh, into the, the solutions, okay, what are, how could we actually um, overcome the, these challenges? And so uh, back to you, uh, Jose, what do you think are the, some of the solutions? Of course, when it comes to resolving that tension between short-term and long-term objectives, allow me please to use the, the analogy or the metaphor with the myopia. When we focus too much on the short terms, it's because we are not aware about what is behind the road, what is on the, that we're going to face in the long term. So the way in which we help organizations to address that issue is by giving them some tools, some lenses, that enable them to see what will happen if they don't act now or what would happen if they act today in a way that is not considering that long term. You were speaking before about uh, SMEs. For some SMEs, it's difficult to understand that they are going to be attacked. It's not a question about if, it's a question about when, as you, as you mentioned before. So it's about giving them the, the frameworks, the tools, to incorporate the long term 
in their current analysis. And what we have seen is that those companies that manage to do that, that succeed, they develop future strategies that enable them to, to be better prepared and somehow resolving that tension between the today and the tomorrow. Do you have an example, a concrete example of one of these tools? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I can give you examples regarding the tools about uh, future data strategies and risk assessments. So let's make risk assessment about what happened if you act today in this particular way. We play, and now allow me to get a little bit professory, right? We play with probabilities, like what's the likelihood of this scenario? What would be the cost of you ending up in that scenario? And this is how we start building the awareness for those organizations to understand how they need to act today in order to avoid that eventual nightmare that could pop up. Uh, I'm very much in line with what you, you, you just said. I think that uh, also uh, with what uh, Delphine said about the time to respond to, to attacks is compressing. The pace of uh, transformation becomes exponential for, for some. I think um, in addition to short term versus long term, there's also the issue of foresight. You know, investing in foresight uh, studies because it doesn't mean because something is not um, currently feasible that it won't be uh, possible in, in a few years, and that needs also uh, to be uh, to be to be factoring. Mm -hmm. uh, then. Um, Back uh, to, 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 to Pascal, uh, you were mentioning before the, um, I mean, the government and private sector cooperation, how difficult it, it is, I mean, to, to make them cooperate and um, maybe some, I mean, some solution that you could um, uh, pr provide or have identified. Uh, yes, I, I, I think the, the, the co cooperation has, 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 has many, many, many different aspects. So to, um, to foster cooperation, you first of all need to uh, um, to know the, 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 need, the needs or the the, 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 the benefit of, of, of being of, of, of collab collaborating, and and this is often often what we what we see at the moment linked to to the to data, the knowledge about about the threats, for instance, about um, how to protect against different different type of uh, type of act attacks. And, um, and I think it has been mentioned previously, it, it is, uh, we see that with communities that do share a lot of information, that there is a lot more benefit of sharing information about, about threats, about, about uh, uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, than trying to, I would say, to hide it and, and thinking that, we, that, that one has a competitive uh, advantage, be it on the private or on the public side. And so also on the public side, there is this, there is this, there is this thinking, um, and um, allow me to give in to 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 uh, take an example from from Luxembourg. So I'm 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 for, I'm for Luxembourg, where we uh, where we have uh, uh, created since since many years an an um, an of, of fostered, better to say, an initiative uh, to share information about about threats, about attacks, about IOCs that were were mentioned as well. And we really see the, 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 the private sector really embracing, embracing this, also contributing a lot with their own data, because if we put together information about knowledge of, 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 uh, of, of attackers, of, of, I would say technical knowledge, let's, let's start with technical knowledge. <laughs> about criminals, that's, that's yet another step, but about technical knowledge, how do the different attacks work? How how can we protect against? Well, it will benefit. It will benefit uh, uh, everybody. So the the um, uh, this is really uh, things thing that we have to to um, foster more. And from the public side, there there is um, there is investments. There is a lot of a lot of uh, initiatives to 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 foster this at national level in Luxembourg, but also in, at European level. There is, for instance, an, uh, at the moment, an, a quite bit, big SOC project that is being, that is being financed by, uh, with European money that uh, tries, or that will try in the future to bring together, first, on the public side, the different uh, member states, uh, agencies that, that um, have knowledge about, about the attacks uh, and share this information among, 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 uh, among each other, and then, in the second step, also bringing in private companies uh, that also have their view, I would say, on, on, the, on the landscape, and making sure that altogether we can become more efficient, 
when reacting to incidents or reacting to attacks, uh, because what we see on the other side they are doing as well. The criminals are sharing a lot, and, and, and they are really professionalizing this, so we really have to, to focus on this. Uh, and the gov governments or, or, or European, the U European Union, but also different member states we see, or, or also other governments also in Switzerland, we see a lot of um, uh, initiatives from the public side also to finance, to foster and to, to uh, contribute uh, these, these initiatives because it's, it's, an, it's an important uh, element. One idea that exists in, in, in Luxembourg, just to close with that example, is to create what we called an open cybersecurity data space, so a place where everybody can, can put its data, describe what type of data it is, and then uh, make sure that, that everybody can, can then benefit from it and, and contribute with its own data to really... Um, uh, and also, uh, I would say, trying to do it in the way that it's also accessible and usable by, by small companies, because SMEs, was mentioned, are key. So this is an, this is an uh, initiative that we, are, we will start now in, in, in Luxembourg. We are small, so we can do this trying out, and we'll see if, it, if, it's, if it's successful and if it can, uh, if it can grow uh, bigger afterwards. Okay. And because we are in Switzerland, and Switzerland is part of, not part of the EU, uh, <laughs> It doesn't matter that, uh, I mean, how do you cooperate with countries that are not part uh, of the EU? And uh, in that space, does, uh, does politic, should politics be put on the side? Because basically, we, we're part of the same network. Uh, I would say yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I would say there are different levels, of course. But on, the, on a pure technical level, uh, on, the, on the level where it, it, it needs to be operational, where you need to address incidents, where you need to, to be able to react to detect and react fast, I would say uh, definitely uh, policies uh, should be, uh, politics should, should be aside. And it is happening since many, many years. I would say the CSERT community, for instance, worldwide is collaborating uh, since, since uh, uh, I would say, you know, on a daily basis, and they are sharing information. Right. And, um, and afterwards, the questions are, okay, what, what, how is, will, will this information impact on, on more political issues? And, and then it can go up to levels, but on a pure technical operational level, uh, we, should be, we should have an open and transparent way of, of seeing uh, the, the, the knowledge about threats and, and, and their solutions. Okay, good. Delphine, you highlight a lot of challenges. Um, can you highlight a lot of responses? Responses, <laughs> and, solutions. Uh, and solutions, yeah. yes. Uh, they are, yeah, okay, we have lots of solutions. <laughs> it all depends on the budget that we have and the priorities for sure. Now, I would say clearly, uh, talking about the ransom attacks, ransomware, so secure by design, uh, be ready, prepare yourself, you know, like implement endpoint protections, uh, get robust uh, backups in order to restore uh, operations. Uh, security awareness training, because we know that uh, employees are actually the, the weakest link, I would say, of a company. So I think this is really important to have a, a security awareness training, that's for sure. Um, when it comes to uh, talent shortage, which I'm facing absolutely every day, so I need to be very creative and inventive in order to retain uh, all the talents that we have. So this is really important to have also some uh, career path regular training, so I think uh, Kuleski uh, security is, um, we have, a, I would say, a good advantage because we are a full uh, managed security services provider, so we are covering the entire spectrum of cybersecurity, which gives a lot of opportunities for the employees to evolve, uh, so this is uh, clearly uh, an advantage. I would say also for cloud security, put access control, clearly robust, uh, supply chain audits, uh, your third party, um, get uh, contract agreements and uh, monitor also the, the full uh, supply chain. Clearly, this is kind of uh, advices and recommendations uh, I, can, I can share. And I just wanted to, to, to follow up, and uh, you were mentioning that types of attack are, cha are changing. What, what we see also, especially with what we've seen recently with generative AI's democratization of this technology. Are you witnessing in your field um, this concept of crime as a service? So basically that now you have tool that you know, people can, can use and uh, they're not specialists in cybersecurity and suddenly they become a, a cyber criminal. And how, how, how do you deal with that? 
No, for sure. It's a very valid point. So uh, artificial intelligence is definitely growing and is being used uh, for good things and for bad things, that's for sure. Uh, what I would say is uh, the human factor is the, the most important because uh, having technologies and tools, it will never replace a human brain, uh, clearly. And that's the reason why we, we do focus a lot, really, on, uh, on, on people in order to really, you know, think, feel, have perceptions. And this is, you know, everything that robots cannot do, for example. Right. But uh, clearly, this is, a, this is a threat. I didn't, I didn't mention uh, artificial intelligence in the list of the challenges, but clearly, this is becoming a, a challenge, that's for sure, because of the limitations. All right. Okay. Indeed. And finally, but not least, uh, Emmerich, you were talking about resilience, about SMEs, so any, any solutions? Well, I think a lot has been said already, especially on the, uh, the human side, how important it is. I would say for us, we're also trying to help people connect the dots, so it's not just a, an issue with the IT department. I think it, this needs to be linked to the quality department. And so, given that we have a very good connection with the quality departments in the companies, we're trying to see how, you know, a security incident is actually going to lead to a quality issue in your products, uh, whether you know it or not. And so, um, that's for us an, an interesting entry point into uh, some of the customer conversations and to say, well, we're going to come to do a quality audit, and you know what, why don't we add another day to just look at information security and cybersecurity, Uh, just to help you understand where you are, do a gap analysis, something like this. So I think we, we just have to find the ways to, to enter and connect with the right people and to make people really understand the seriousness of the matter. So uh, many of the SMBs, so yes, I will talk again about SMBs, they, they're really sometimes not even aware of how exposed they are and what would be the impact if they get attacked. I mean, a lot of these companies, they simply go out of business. And uh, some of these attacks you don't recover from when you're in a small enterprise. So I think that's, that's, I think a lot was said about what we can, a lot can be done. And uh, I hope that people kind of got an idea of what we can do. But what is the main argument that you are uh, providing to you know, CEOs or SMEs about the importance of investing in that space? It's really, is it really about, okay, if you, do, if you do nothing, you're going to be out of business? So it's one, it's one of the arguments, but like I said, I think we're also take, trying to take the conversation to a higher level, and this is about resilience of a business, this is about the quality of your products, this is about the, the, the opportunity of, that your company is going to have to do business with other companies. Uh, Delphi mentioned, uh, you know, these security questionnaires in supply chains. Today it's just a piece of paper, but tomorrow it will, it will not be a piece of paper. It will be tested, it will be verified, and people need to be prepared. Excellent. All right. And probably you sh uh, you're frustrated by uh, the, the short time of the, of the panel, the duration of the panel, but uh, unfortunately we have to, 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 to bring it to a close. Mm -hmm.